G'day guys, this will be my review of the Pulsar Merger LRF XL50 thermal binoculars. These are a first for Pulsar, being a 1024 by 768 resolution device. I must say I've been very excited to try these out, and they definitely don't disappoint. As usual, during the review I'll be splicing over a heap of thermal clips recorded by the mergers. This should give you a good idea of the device performance in field conditions. Straight up, full clarity, this device was sent to me by Pulsar as I'm a member of the Pro Staff team. This one will hurt the pocket, but after a lot of time in the field with the XL50 mergers, I must say they're outstanding and it is a device which I do wish to acquire for my personal and professional thermal shooting. I've confessed in the past to being a thermal snob, and yes, this one satisfies me on all levels, being 1024 resolution. Basic specs, it has a base mag of 2.5x, it's a 1024 by 768 resolution sensor with a 12 micron pixel pitch, the NETD of less than 40 millikelvins, and with a 50 millimeter F1 germanium lens. It's a full color AMOLED IP screen at 1024 by 768 resolution as well, and a magnesium body. What's that mean? Well, being a 1024 resolution, that puts a much higher pixel density on the image viewed compared to the regular 640 or 384 resolution devices. This provides a much better image and a much clearer digital magnification, to say the least. What I would suggest people to do, if you haven't watched my XP50 merger review, please go and have a look at that, because the XL50s are in an all but identical form factor. To keep this review a little bit shorter, I'll try not to double up on things that I did cover in the XP50 review, like the layout, buttons, menus, things like that. I'll just try and cover the differences that I have noticed with the XL50s and how they perform in the field. No, I have not been taking side-by-side -side footage of the XP50 and XL50 in the field as it's not practical for my contract shooting use and lugging two large pairs of thermal binoculars around. I've been using the XL50s multiple times a week for a few months now. That's a fair bit of use when you stack it up and I've got a good handle on them now compared to the XP50s which has been my primary thermal scanner for nearly a year now. Hopefully I've gauged all the highlights of the device that you guys will want to know about. As usual, I'll nitpick a few things being a fussy bastard. Ergonomics and build quality are excellent with an intuitive button layout, which I highly enjoy using. I'm really used to this merger layout now, and practically, it's great. On the physical feel of the buttons, I do prefer the more positive detent and soft click the XP50s have. The XL50 buttons feel a bit more mushy without the soft click if I'm honest. Sometimes I do find myself inadvertently turning on the pip or zoom when I didn't realise I'd press the button. Not a big issue, but it's a slight difference between each model that I've noticed. One gripe I had with the XP50 was the front barrel focuser was way too easy to move. Basically, this made it a two-handed device, in my opinion, as you constantly had to shift focus as it was easily bumped off. Well, the new XL has a slightly different rubber focus piece and it's much stiffer to rotate. I can get these in and out of my chest pouch all night long, one-handed, and not bump the focus off at all. This alone is a notable and welcome practical change. It's certainly something that I do notice as a field user. On that, just a little DIY hack for the XP50 was with the front lens cap removed, I ran an O-ring on this front area of the objective. This firmed up the focus rotation and solved that issue. Something to note is the depth of image focus on the XL50 is much deeper than the XP50s, which is great. Yes, I still tweak and fine tune the focus with the XL50s, but nowhere near as much as I do with the XP50s, viewing animals across various ranges. Something you might notice on my mergers is these two O-rings I've got on each side. These are a fast focus eyepiece, individually each side, the O-rings just locks that down and it means that I don't bump them out of focus when I get them in and out of my bino chest pouch. And also it holds these little side anti-glare flaps down. Um, I'm not a big fan of flaps if I'm honest. Field of view, that's something to cover with the larger 1024 resolution sensor. The XL50s are still a 2.5 mag image, the same as the XP50 images. Where it changes is due to the 1024 sensor which is a wider field of view at 14 degrees versus 12.4 degrees on the XP50. Doesn't sound much different, but in use I highly appreciate that field of view, which considering the 2.5x image magnification, it's very immersive. 
The ability to quickly scan a wider area yet still maintain a base magnification of 2.5x, I find that fantastic. The XL50 also has an increased detection range of 2300 meters compared to the XP50 at 1800 meters which is still bloody impressive on the XP50, mind you. You definitely get more thermal grunt with the XL50s from the increased pixel density and higher detection range, punching out a long way in the field with these. I have long in capitals. Battery life. That's worth mentioning. The 1024 sensor is a bit more power hungry compared to the XP50. The removable APS-3 batteries, which last around three hours in the XP50, I only get two and a quarter, maybe two and a half hours out of in the XL50. No biggie, as I carry multiple spares, and there's still a five to six hour runtime internal battery. Overall, the XL50 is rated on both removable and internal batteries at a total of eight hours runtime, and the XP50 is a solid 10 hour unit. Just something to note, and you might need more than one spare for the XL50 to run all night, especially if it's really cold. The LRF, this barrel here, I find it excellent, and it's certainly something that I've found myself used to now in my thermal scanner. An LRF isn't just about knowing the range to fire accurately. I've found it makes me a more efficient night stalker knowing the target distance. It allows me to move quickly or slowly when stalking animals at night. If I'm walking in on pigs which are 400 plus metres away, I can move quickly without being too fussed about noise at all. Or it might be rabbits at sub 100 metres and I know to slow down and be more silent. Image. Everyone wants to know about the image. In short, I find it phenomenal at this resolution. The XP50 is an amazing thermal scanner as I have repeatedly stated, but the XL50 is another level again. I've used the XL50s to ID a fox at just over 800 metres as it moved around in the open. That's ID, not just, oh, there's a hot blob out there in the paddock. For anyone that's used thermal, that's damned impressive. I did have the XP50s in the car that night, and even knowing where to look, there's no way I was getting anything like ID at that range with a 640 resolution thermal. If I'm honest, it was probably that single event that did push me to want to buy the XL50s. I was that impressed. I've viewed fallow deer and pigs amongst livestock at five to 800 meters and been easily able to pick ID on the target species. Rabbits, I can ID at around 250 to 300 meters, which again is impressive as they're not large and reasonably insulated. In the conditions I've been working in, I haven't noticed a massive difference between the very sensitive sub 25 millikelvin sensor in the XP50s versus the sub 40 millikelvin sensor which the XL50 is. Yes, the terrain does pop a bit more with the XP50s, but I'll take the still excellent overall view of the XL50 plus an improved target animal image any day of the week. Digital magnification, I find that one interesting from my perspective. Yes, it's something that I do use occasionally, and yes, it is obviously better with a 1024 resolution sensor. On pure stats, the XL50 has nearly 40% more pixels than the 640 resolution XP50. So yes, digital magnification is notably improved. But I must say I'm getting ID at the long ranges mentioned above, just using base mag. Maybe I'm just used to running thermal, but I do prefer the best base mag image I can get to put the highest pixel density possible on that target animal. Yes, sometimes things are very small on the eyepiece display, but with the XL50 as base mag, it's still an extremely sharp image. Remember, with most thermals, and especially these mergers, the magnification is all digital. So when you jump to a 5 mag or 10 mag image, you have halved or quartered that pixel density. It's still a good image at 10 mag, but I personally prefer the sharpness of base mag over watching a larger, more blob-like animal on the display at 10 mag. I've pondered this for a while now, and if I had to put a gauge on where I think the XL sit against the XP50, I'd say the XL is about 20 to 30% better on image alone. It's just my take, but under 400 meters, the XP50 still holds its own against the XL50. Yes, the XL50 looks better when swapping back and forth in comparison to the XP50. You can pick the difference being nearly half the resolution. Think of it like TV shopping. The $2,000 65-inch TV is probably amazing if viewed alone at home, but side by side against the latest $10,000 version in 8K, of course the latest most expensive model is better. 
but you won't pick a TV image that's five times better as per the cost ratio. You're well into the realm of diminishing returns and the XL50 mergers are no difference. If you want a device that can get you a longer range target ID and an amazing image, well, the XL50 is definitely your jam there and it might well be worth the cash. If anyone's wondering where I am, no, it's not a haunted house. It's around a hundred year old shearing shed. I'm here on contract to do a pig shoot. I just thought I'd take the time out to do this review through the day while I've got a little bit of downtime. Video and audio recording. I'll always take the best possible video that I can get as a content creator, and I must say the XL50s are the best that I've ever used in regards to this. Something I have noticed is the preamps on the XL50 audio are a little quieter than my XP50 mergers. Definitely still usable, but to pick up a soft talking or whispering voice with the XL50s, I have to boost the audio clips to a maximum of 200% in my editing app, to hear it at a better level. On just audio, the XP50 merges win in this space, and I really feel Pulsar nailed it with that device. The cost, how much is the cost? Oh my God, they're so expensive, people will say. No, these are not cheap with a recommended retail around 11,000 Aussie dollars. Let's break that down a little though, because I feel it's worth discussing. It was only a few years ago that the top of the range Pulsar accolades were nearly $10,000 in Australia. Fast forward to now, and the equivalent merger XP50s are around the $7,000 Aussie dollar mark. Pretty awesome value if you ask me for what they are capable of. No, that doesn't make the XL50s any cheaper, but I'd love to compare them to an older pair of XP50 accolades, which cost slightly less a few years ago. I think the performance gap would be substantial. We are certainly seeing a new era with the HD devices releasing, and I for one am very excited to where this leap leads to for us users. Thanks again to Pulsar for sending me the device and extra vision for the local Australian support. Down in the video description is a link to the Pulsar global site if you're chasing more device information. The Australian distributor for Pulsar is ExtraVision and they have agents all over the country. I also have in the description a link to the Hunt the Night website. That's an affiliate link. It costs you nothing as the buyer to use, but it does help me a bunch along the way. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see everyone in the next video.